The Daughters of St. Paul, in collaboration with the Archdiocese of Palo, present to you Sunday Gospel Reflections. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. People were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced the children and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's the third Sunday of January once again. This means that for us here in the Philippines, we once again celebrate the Feast of the Santo Nino. We Filipinos are known to have an exceptionally strong devotion to the Holy Child Jesus, the Señor Santo Nino. And it is for this reason that Rome has granted a special permission to celebrate the Feast of the Santo Nino every third Sunday of January. It is therefore important to make sure that we all understand the real meaning of this devotion. First and foremost, our devotion to the Santo Nino is inextricably linked to our history, the history of the Filipino people and nation. We know from history that the image of the Santo Nino was given as a gift to the first Christians in our land after their baptism in 1521. So for 500 years now, the image of the Santo Nino has been in our land. This has been the concrete historical icon that marked Christianity in the Philippines. Indeed, the Santo Nino has always been our constant companion. The devotion to the Santo Nino is so strong that we see numerous parishes and chapels dedicated to the Santo Nino. Even in Filipino homes, there may not be a crucifix, but there will always be a picture or image of the Santo Nino. The devotion to the Santo Nino has a theological significance. Its close proximity to the Christmas celebrations emphasizes once again to us the mystery of the Incarnation. The Santo Nino shows us that the second person of the Holy Trinity became human like us. God truly shared our human nature. He really became like us in all things except sin. The image of the Santo Nino is a clear manifestation of this. The God-made man even underwent the stages of our life. He became a simple, humble child. The devotion to the Santo Nino is also very much in line with what the Gospel today tells us. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. The Feast of the Santo Nino conveys to us this very important lesson that we have to be childlike in order to enter the heavenly kingdom. So what are these traits of a child that we have to emulate? Basically, we can name three. Humility, obedience, and trust. These traits are very evident in little children, but is difficult and unattractive to grown-ups. The image of the Santo Nino reminds us to remain humble, especially that as we grow older, there is the tendency to become so engrossed with our life's accomplishment and achievements. Remember that the foundation of holiness is none other than remaining humble. 
It is, then, impossible to grow in holiness when we think highly of ourselves and lack the basic foundation that is humility. The image and devotion of the Santo Nino also reminds us of the virtue of obedience because growing older makes us hold on to our rights, our freedom, our entitlements. We do not want other people interfering with them. We want to exert our power and autonomy and find it repugnant to submit to another person's will and authority. The image of the Holy Child presents to us that no matter how much we have achieved in life, no matter how grand our titles are, no matter how we exert our rights and freedom, before God, we will always be His children. And as children of God, it is but necessary that we submit ourselves to His will. We obey. Finally, the image and devotion to the Santo Nino encourages us to trust and depend on God, just as a child trusts and depends on his parents. This is equally important since growing older, we want to think that we are self-sufficient, that we can do everything by ourselves. Sometimes, we have the tendency to exert control on almost every aspect of our life. We forget that it is only in God that we are able to do everything and without Him, we are nothing. Brothers and sisters, may our strong and fervent devotion to the Santo Nino as a Filipino people lead us to follow the example of the child Jesus, humble, obedient, and dependent. May our devotion to the Santo Nino help us not only in our growth in holiness, but also as we live in this difficult chapter of our lives with this pandemic. May we remain humble and obedient to our health experts, frontliners, and authorities, as well as trust and depend on God, for after all, we are His children. Our welfare and protection will always be His utmost will. Señor Santo Nino, bendicione kami. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, thank you for the gift of faith and for the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, grant that our devotion to Señor Santo Nino lead us to be humble, trustful, and obedient to your will. Señor Santo Nino, bendicione kami. Viva Señor Santo Nino!